Welcome back, Wildcat Nation, to episode three of season five of Wildcat Week. I'm Michael Roberts, and tonight we'll be spotlighting the women's track and field team here at IWU. I'll be by myself for this episode as Abby is busy with softball, but that is okay because the show must go on. Um, but before we get started, here's Isaac with this week's Crossroads League in Review. I'm Isaac Wolf with your Crossroads League Week in Review. In baseball, the battle for the top of the conference went down this weekend. Number 18, Taylor and Indiana Wesleyan had a four-game series across Friday and Saturday. The team split the series 2-2, keeping Taylor on top in the conference standings at 22-6 in the Crossroads League and 29-13 overall. Indiana Wesleyan is one game behind them at 21-7 in conference and 27-11 overall. The Wildcats' next weekend series will be at home against Huntington, while Taylor will face off against Marion in Indianapolis on Thursday and Saturday. In softball, number 7 Marion split with Grace on Tuesday, then swept Goshen across Saturday and Sunday, including a pair of five-inning run rule wins, 15-0 on Saturday and 11-1 on Sunday. Pitcher Olivia Stunkel extended her record to 17-2 with a pair of wins in the series. Number 16 Indiana Wesleyan split all three series this week against Huntington, St. Francis, and Taylor. Morgan Yater batted 389 on the week and stole eight bases across the six games. The Wildcats are still on top in the conference standings at 21-5, while Marion sits at number two with a conference record of 19-5. As for this week's Crossroads League Awards, the Baseball Player of the Week is Riley Singleton of Taylor. Singleton at 667 with two home runs and nine RBI during a series split for number 18 Taylor against Indiana Wesleyan. The freshman also scored five times, including four times in the series finale. The Baseball Pitcher of the Week is Darren Swanson of St. Francis. Swanson went the distance in USF's 1-0 win over Goshen, fanning 11 and scattering 5 hits and 2 walks over 7 innings. The Softball Player of the Week is Macy Dowd of St. Francis. Dowd posted multi-hit games in 5 of 6 outings and ended the week hitting 500 with 11 hits and 22 at-bats for St. Francis. The sophomore also belted 2 home runs and 2 doubles while driving in 11 runs and scoring 7 of her own. The Softball Pitcher of the Week is Nadia Hoffman of Mount Vernon. Hoffman fired a complete game shutout to lead Mount Vernon to a 4-0 win over Spring Arbor. In her seven scoreless innings, Hoffman fanned 11 and allowed just three hits and one walk. The Men's Outdoor Track Athlete of the Week is Brandon Kleber of Grace. Kleber ran a winning time of 30 minutes and 52.68 seconds in the 10,000 meters at the Tiffin Track Carnival. The Grace Junior automatically qualified for NAI Nationals with this performance. The Men's Outdoor Field Athlete of the Week is, once again, Jacob Natral of Marion. Natral broke his own school record in the shot put and took first of 31 at Ball State's meet. Natral posted a distance of 18.34 meters for the best mark in the NAI this year. The Women's Outdoor Track Athlete of the Week is Alex Ebettino of St. Francis. Ebettino scored an individual win in the 5,000 meters for St. Francis at the Ball State Challenge. The senior crossed in 17 minutes and 29.83 seconds to hit NAIA A standard. The Women's Outdoor Field Athlete of the Week is Princess Kara of Indiana Wesleyan for the second straight week. She highlighted Iwoo's showing at the Ball State Challenge, turning in the longest mark in the discus and second best mark in the shot put in the NAIA this season. Kara hit A standards in each while winning the discus and taking second in the shot put. The Men's Tennis Player of the Week is Pablo Gregori of Grace. Gregori was unbeaten in number 19 Grace's team win over Goshen. The junior won 6-2 and 6-3 at number 2 singles and 6-3 at number 1 doubles to face the Lancers. The Women's Tennis Player of the Week is Maria Way of Indiana Wesleyan. Way went 4-0 on the week for number 18 Indiana Wesleyan, helping the Wildcats to wins over number 19 Holy Cross and Lords. Way's third set tiebreaker in victory at number 5 singles lifted Iwu to the win over Holy Cross. The Men's Golfer of the Week is Brandon Hefner of Marion. Hefner topped the field and led number 24 Marion to the team title at the Midway Invitational. Hefner posted back-to-back -back scores of 71 to take medalist honors. And the Women's Golfer of the Week is Shane Lim of Taylor. Lim was number 20 Taylor's top performer at a loaded Dalton State Invitational as the sophomore shot 72 and 73 to finish third at the event that featured nine NAI top 25 programs. That's all for this week with your Crossroads League Week in Review. I'm Isaac Wolf. Thank you, Isaac, again for Crossroads League in Review. Again, we are spotlighting the Indiana Wesleyan women's track team for episode three of season five today. We have senior Chloe Taylor and senior Blessing Lauder Millen. Uh, to kind of start things off, I want to know and hear how the both of you got into track. Yeah, I can start. So for me, honestly, it was a very last minute decision to come to IWU. I originally was at Southern Wesleyan University and it just wasn't a good fit for me. And so my dad's like, hey, why don't you apply to IWU? And I was like, there's no way that's going to work. It was literally a month before 
school started, but I just decided to go for it. So I applied and I ended up talking to the head coach and he's like, yeah, we'd love to have you. And a big part of being at SWU was my, my track scholarship. So I was worried that that wouldn't like transfer over, but it ended up transferring over and actually I got better scholarships here. So that's kind of how I got to be on the team. Yeah, I guess for me, um, I guess in high school, I wanted, I knew I wanted to run track. I was not fast enough until my junior year of high school and I started looking at Christian schools and I came here to ILU and I, when I um, came here on my visit, I just said I wanted to talk to the track coach and he met with me graciously and we had two other meetings after that and then I stayed at an overnight visit and then he offered me some scholarship to come and run here. So. And you guys kind of briefly talked about my next question or um so the first part of this question is when and what was the moment you realized you wanted to continue your track career in college? Yeah, for me, it was honestly, so in high school, I only did one year of track in high school and it ended up just going really well. I just tried, my main event's triple jump and somebody just told me, hey, I think you'd be really good at this. I think you should try it. And so I tried it at a high school meet and I ended up being good and I made it to states and I, at States, I placed pretty well, and so that kind of led into, like, my college track career, but really in high school, before I tried in high school, I had never even thought I would, like, do track or anything. Yeah, for me, um, I started running in eighth grade. I had been playing basketball, like, my whole life. I played all the way through high school, and when I was younger, I was like, I'm going to go to college for basketball. That's going to be my thing, but I've always loved running. My dad ran in college. My mom runs, um, so I started running, and I turned out to be, I was pretty good, it's pretty average, and then about my sophomore year of high school, I was like, I, I want to play a college sport, and for me at that point, it looked like track was where I could um, succeed, I guess, so my dad took me out, we started running together and lifting, and I finally got my time down enough to be able to receive scholarships. So. And that kind of, you both touched this on, like, both, um, the track scholarship was kind of like a main reason why you guys came to IWU, um, but kind of what else made you choose IWU over any other college? Yeah, so one of the things that I kind of lacked at my other school that I transferred from was just the community aspect. Going into college was really important to me to have a Christian community, um, people that were like-minded that kind of wanted to do similar things in life or wanted life to look a similar way, and that's just something I didn't really find at my first school, and so in looking at IWU, one of the things that I feel like they really emphasized was like a Christian community. And then especially after talking to the track coach, um, one of the things I really appreciate about Coach Snyder is that he is so specific in recruiting, looking for people that are going to um, contribute to the atmosphere of the team that he feels like it's a healthy environment for people and just like a Christian environment to be in. And so that's something that after talking to him, I really feel like was emphasized. And so in, I never um, visited the school before I came, but I just trusted that that's what it was going to be like and got here and it's been awesome. Could you repeat the question? Yeah, of course. Um, kind of how, what else besides like kind of your track scholarship was the reason why you decided to choose IWU over another college? Yeah, I knew I wanted to go to a Christian school. I had visited other Christian schools and this one I felt the most at peace with. I was originally looking at majoring in psychology and I realized that they had a really great program here. In addition, obviously it's a Christian school, but lots of schools can claim they're a Christian school. And coming here, talking to Coach Snyder and just even a couple girls on the team, it was clear that this my education would be focused on the Lord. And that was really important to me, which is, yeah, I, I just ended up honestly just like committing because I felt like the right thing to do. And it was like a gut decision. And I'm, I'm really happy that I decided to come here. And kind of transitioning into kind of a big accomplishment for IWU track um, is that you guys signed a deal to host the Outdoor Track Nationals, which is pretty, pretty cool. You know, uh, not a lot of people can say that their school did that. Um, but so for the past two years already, um, you guys have already hosted the Outdoor Track Nationals in May. Do you feel like that adds any pressure kind of going into meets towards the end of this year? Like, especially with um, Crossroads uh, Championships in about two weeks and kind of nationals are come kind of gearing up towards a, a month and a half away. Do you feel like that adds any pressure or kind of have a mindset of, I need to do well because I need to qualify for nationals? 
Yeah, I feel like some of that definitely for sure. Um, with having it at home and just being comfortable comfortable with the facilities and stuff I feel like part of that makes it like okay like this is a environment I've already been in this is like a place I know how to compete in and so that aspect of it is less stressful but definitely like going into the meets as they whittle down throughout the season um, if I'm trying to qualify in my event it's like okay every meet that passes is like if I didn't qualify then there's definitely a lot of pressure on the next meet to qualify but I'm excited because I feel like once we get some good weather it'll just help everybody be in good spirits and be able to compete really well. Yeah, I agree. Coming into this season, I was pretty nervous because I'm a senior. It's my last shot, and there's a lot of girls running the 400 this year. Like, there are nine girls who could potentially run the 4x4, which is just insane, and everyone within a second or two of each other. Last year, the 4x4 qualified for nationals, and I ended up being the alternate uh, because the girls ran faster than me, honestly, and which was, it was a great experience to be, to train all of May and then to be at this stage and then to be able to cheer my teammates uh, it was really great but I'm an extremely competitive person so obviously this year I'm like I really want to be on that four by four team but um so as the meets go on I'm like oh my gosh I gotta run faster <laughs> like this is this is really scary but um either way I'll be here and I'm so excited that we get to host the, it's fun just watching everyone compete they're so fast and then I know that the 4x4 will make it this year, whether I'm on it or not, and I, I cannot wait to cheer on my teammates for the race. And that kind of perfectly ties into kind of my next question about the team dynamic, uh, specifically for the women's track team, because I know the men's and women spend a lot of time together, whether that's training, um, lifting, or just even just kind of hanging out together um, in groups. How do you feel like the team dynamic has been for both of you since joining the team? Yeah, so right from the get-go, the team dynamic was huge for me. Um, when I first came in, I feel like the seniors that were here on the team, they've now graduated, but they really just, like, were so welcoming and so open to me. They reached out to me, like, first thing that I got on campus because I didn't, like, know what I was doing at all, but they reached out to me. Um, we had Bible studies right away. Um, I just was able to get very incorporated and felt very welcomed and, like, a part of the team, even though I was somebody new on it. And then I feel like just throughout the past three years of being here, the team dynamic is something that's always um, just a really healthy environment. And everybody's super encouraging. Um, we're always there for each other, always have each other's backs, always trying to lift each other up and just encourage each other to do better. Yeah, for me, I came in in fall of 2020, so it was like COVID year. Uh, that was a little crazy, but, and I feel like the team dynamic was different because of COVID. We would, you know, go to practice, we're supposed to social distance, we'd wear a mask until we'd run, and then we have to put them back on afterwards. And I was one of three girls in the 400 group. It was me and another freshman and then a senior. And that was great. I loved that we became really close, but I didn't feel truly connected to the rest of the team. And I, I really think it's just because of COVID and the way we had the social distance and stuff. But as the years have gone on, the 400 group has grown and it's been really happy. I've been really like, um, let's say it like happy, I guess. Like I'm just more happy because I get to work with my teammates. This year is different for me. There's a lot of 400 girls. I am a senior, but I'm also a part of the throws team this year. I'm throwing javelin, which is something new I decided to pick up for fun. And it's been really fun to get to know all the throwers, too. It's a completely different culture than the runners. It just is different. Um, but I really enjoyed being a part of both teams, and the 400 group has really gotten close this year, and that's the biggest thing I'm going to miss at when I graduate is all of the girls. And kind of touching more base on this season uh, I previously mentioned that you're kind of a month and a half away from nationals um, what is kind of coach Snyder doing and kind of the rest of the team for gearing um, your minds and kind of just exposure to high caliber uh, meets and just a lot of good talent yeah so I feel like um, every time we circle up to pray before we start practicing it's always just a reminder to um, give it your best, um, no matter whether you feel like it's going to be a good day or not, just to give it 100% and that in every single meet we're trying to get better. It's like, it's awesome if you did well, but that's not like the end for you. You need to continue to push and work hard and, and encourage your teammates to do the same. So I feel like he's just constantly reminding us like hard work is going to pay off, but you guys just like, it's not done yet until the season's over. So just 
having that like non-quitter mindset, even if you're tired, because at this point in the season, it's, it's been a long season. We had indoor season leading to outdoor season. So people are starting to get tired and that can start to show and like, practice and stuff, but just continuing to work hard all the way to the end, I feel like is something he really emphasizes. Yeah, and indoor, he was pretty clear with his expectations that we are going to qualify. Uh, the 4x4 is going to qualify. So that's kind of been like on our horizon, setting our sights on that. And in addition, this past weekend, we ran it in Tennessee, which was a really fun meet. And these girls were fast. I mean, we got our butts whooped in some of the events, which is fun and to be able to run with those sort of girls. Um, so I can de I definitely see this year the meets that we're in, we're competing against girls that are just extremely fast and it's pushing us to be faster. I mean, me specifically, I I am faster can like this year or at this point last year, like I was running slower than I am now, which is really exciting. But I feel like Coach Snyder uh, he just kind of set that expectation early, which was a positive, and I think we've been kind of running off of that. He's mm -hmm. been clear that uh, he wants us to qualify because of the kind of competition that we're running against. And this is kind of like an interesting question, to say the least, but what do you feel like that IWU women's track and field um, does differently or kind of sets them apart from any other athletic team on campus? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. Do you have a good answer? Um, I feel like most of the girls, I would go to say all of the girls, have a relationship with the Lord, mm -hmm. which is really special. The way Coach Schneider recruits, he doesn't really recruit. He is <laughs> honestly true. happy. <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> he he kind of just waits for girls to come to him, which I honestly can't. That's, how, that's what I did, so mm -hmm. I can't hate on them for that. Um, he kind of just waits for them to come, and he recruits based on character. Obviously, he wants us to be fast. That, that is a factor. We want to have a good team. But he truly does like recruit based on character. So I feel like for the women's team, I know there are so many great women's teams. I can think of so many great spiritual leaders on every single other women's team here. But for us specifically, I think we are united because everyone does have a relationship with the Lord. It's very different compared to other teams, like the soccer team, basketball team. They all compete in the same thing together. While this is kind of a team sport, it's very separate. You know, we have this at practice. We have the 100, 200. We have the 400 runners, the 800. We have the throwers who then split up into their whatever event they're working on that day. We have the jumpers, and they split up. And so it, it does become pretty individualized, mm -hmm. um, and we have different groups of people. But I think the thing that unites us is that like. We all have we all have the faith, and mm -hmm. it's very evident in the girls. Even at meets, when they compete, it's it's a really special thing. Mm -hmm. And kind of transitioning into a unique kind of question, you know, you guys are both wrapping up your senior year. You have about two weeks of school left, mm -hmm. uh, That's crazy. which is <laughs> kind of crazy just to think about. Just just thinking long term for me, like I'll be in that position next year, mm -hmm. and it's just like. <laughs> Where did the time go? Um, but what is kind of the ultimate goal for the both of you, whether that's your career choice or kind of just the end of the season? What are you kind of putting into your mind heading into this final stretch? Mm, yeah, that's great. For me, honestly, I've just been trying to make the most of every moment. So even those like moments that I'm tired, or exhausted, or just like want to be done, um, to just lean into the last time I have here with my friends, with my team, just being able to get an education, just to learn. So just keeping like a thankful mindset and just remembering how far I've come and like all the work I've put in to get to this point. And instead of just um, trying to like swing through it or just push through to just really just enjoy every single moment because it's going to go by, like you said, it's going to go by really fast and that's going to be it. So honestly, for me, it's just just to try to have fun and enjoy my last time, last bit of time here. Yeah, I would say pretty close to the same thing. I have been realizing, like, I think it was literally like yesterday. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I have two weeks. That's it. And we have the month of May. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just not obviously the same with everyone on campus. I want to enjoy every single moment that I have, even when it sucks. When we're at practice and I'm breathing hard, I look over at Kaylin, who's another senior, and we're like, this is it. This is all we have. We have to give our best. And then this is what we're going to remember. The people are the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, yeah, I want to win. I want to go to nationals. That would be so awesome. But I only have 
two more weeks or you know a month and a half left with these girls, my teammates that I love so much, and wanting to be intentional and kind of like leave my mark, I think mm -hmm. has been really important for me. But also kind of thinking long term, I've been trying to think that this is not just like a hard and fast end. It's not going to just end on a random Thursday for me. All of these leadership abilities that I have learned that I'm thankful that I've had the opportunity to learn that, you know, opportunities I've been given, I am going into law enforcement after this and the type of culture that we've created on the track team, I want to bring into the department that I end up working for. So as I'm like finishing out, I'm trying to take notes of what has been a positive thing and what's been negative that hopefully I can take and translate into my profession. And kind of, and basically transitioning into our, uh, the last question that we have for you guys, it's definitely the most uh, unique and interesting responses that we get with this. Um, people definitely have fun with it. Um, but what is one fact about yourself or the team that you think others would enjoy knowing or hearing? Mm. <laughs> it's so it's a tough one. That is a tough one. <laughs> it is. An interesting fact about our team that someone would like enjoy. To know. And this could be from freshman year all the way to <laughs> this season. <laughs> like, it doesn't have to be at a meet either. It okay. could be on and off. Okay. I okay. I, I'll, I'll I'll take okay, it. You I'll, can I'll take start. It. I'll, I'll say something. <laughs> so, I think from the outside coming in freshman year, I saw these girls, and I was like, wow, they are the perfect spitting image of what a woman of Christ should be. They're so sweet and kind, and they do everything right. Yeah, but I think they're like we're kind of crazy. Oh, and yeah. I and I said like we're a little wild and I don't think a lot of people see that mm -hmm. side of us. They see the like oh we're so kind like uh, you know I know like <laughs> but we're a little crazy and I realized that at the very end of my freshman year when there were upperclassmen who came back into the dorm and they were like soaking wet and I was like what are they doing? They had just like went and jumped in one of the ponds. It's like 1 a.m. <laughs> and apparently they like left accidentally left some of their clothing there. And it was, it was literally crazy. And I was like, wait, what the heck? Okay, I, like I felt more like normal because I can be a little wild at times. So I think that, I guess the one thing that I would say is like May term gets a little crazy <laughs> and I'm really excited <laughs> for it. And uh, yeah, especially this one being my last one, I'm graduated. I think that we're going to have some fun. Yeah. yeah. You know, not being out of, out of classes and yeah. stuff. No. I would kind of echo that. It's funny because like when I first joined the team, um, actually, no, I'd been here for a year and some new girls joined, some freshmen joined. And I remember talking to them and they were telling me how like intimidated we were to yeah. them. And I was like, no, I, I was like nervous for new people to be joining. And it's just like how we seem to be so like, I don't know, like put together, yeah. I guess, and like intimidating. But really, it's just like we're always down for a party. And it's yeah. just like have fun, laugh, all yeah. that type of stuff. So and I think cool. also being like running track, you think that you have to be so like, you know, I'm going to go out, I'm going to run this wreck well, it's so fun, I love to run, like, we're runners, we like to run, and in reality, like, honestly, most of the time we don't, we're complaining every practice, which <laughs> we get honest, we should do better at, and we've recognized that, but, yeah, yeah. some interesting Just things have fun come out with of those, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, that's all the questions that we have for you guys, uh, but thank you both for being guests on our show. Um, join us next week for Wildcat Week Season 5, Episode 4, where we will hopefully spotlight the men's track and field team if they respond. <laughs> <laughs> Please bear with us. Um, but I'm Mike Roberts with our guest athletes, Chloe Taylor and Blessing Watermilch. Mm -hmm, that's correct. <laughs> All right. Here on Wildcat Week, brought to you by Amplify Media. Amplify Media.